Paul Dixie here. Today I want to talk to you about taking care of your down equipment. So that's probably like a sleeping bag, a jacket, you know, some of y'all do the down booties and just uh, whatever down products you might have, this will probably apply to. So if you're watching this, you probably have something that is down and you've realized that down is awesome. It keeps you warm, it's lightweight, and it's very packable. So, you know, compared to um, a synthetic sleeping bag, a down sleeping bag is gonna take up much less space. But I had always heard that, you know, if down gets wet, it's useless. And this made me think that like, if my down got wet, for some reason it would be destroyed. So I always thought, well, then how do you even wash it? You know, just when I was starting to get in the market of, backpacking and looking at sleeping bags and coats and things like that. But what they're meaning when they say that your down will be useless, it's just that the insulating properties won't be there. You know, your down's going to clump together. It's just going to be completely soaked and it's not going to keep you warm. However, a lot of people take that risk anyway and carry, you know, down sleeping bags, down coats and, and myself included. So yes, you can wash your down. It's okay to get it wet and, and wash it. Um, and actually it helps the loftiness of the sleeping bag or coat or whatever you have um, because by being dirty and having your oils on it and um, by being compressed you know whether in um, your your little sack that you're keeping it in while you're backpacking and then from you sleeping on it it really does help to reloft when it is freshly cleaned so first let's go over how to wash down now i'm going to recommend that you check with whatever you have so if you have a z-pack sleeping bag or a sierra design sleeping bag or a mountain hardware down down coat, you know, make sure you go to the website of that company and check exactly how they say to care for their product because, you know, why wouldn't they know best how to do it? If you don't know what company your sleeping bag came from, I mean, it probably should say, but you know, anyway, or if you're not sure, then it's best to err on the side of safety because these products usually aren't cheap. There are some general rules to look out for when you're washing down. So one of the first things that pretty much everyone will tell you is that you shouldn't use detergent. So, you know, don't take your big old bottle of Tide and pour it in your washing machine and stuff your down sleeping bag in there because detergents like that will actually damage the down by stripping it of its natural oils and you don't want to do that. So um, you want to make sure to use uh, a down specific soap uh, to wash your sleeping bag, coat, etc. You can find these products on Amazon or even probably at your local outfitter. That's actually where I got the bottle of down cleaner that I have is at a local outfitter. If you're gonna wash your sleeping bag in a washing machine, you should not use a top loading washer, so your regular washer with the center agitator because it can tear the baffles on your sleeping bag. And you wanna make sure just to put it on the most delicate cycle, whether that's hand wash or delicate or, you know, just depending on the washing machine you're using, and you wanna zip it up, make sure that any straps or anything like that are all secured, uh, any little pockets zipped up. And a lot of people like to wash theirs inside out because they just feel like the inside gets a, a better washing because you know that's the dirtiest part since your stinky body is inside of it. Actually, some companies, so like Z-Packs, uh, where I have my sleeping bag from, says to not even use um, the front-loading washer but to wash my hand because you know even the front loading washer their concern could damage the back so again you know check with your specific manufacturer all right so if you're going to hand wash like i did all i did was just fill the tub up with some warm water dumped my down cleaner in there kind of mix it all up and uh, one trick you can put your sleeping bag in the stuff sack and kind of have it it's better if it's like you know completely underwater but pull the sleeping bag out into the water from the stuff sack like under it that way you're not having this sleeping bag that's just full of air and then you're like trying to stuff it down and get it wet you know that way some of the air is already compressed out of it and as you pull it out it's going to suck in water and really help to get everything wet to clean it then i just kind of swished it around a little bit i was actually surprised that the water wasn't more disgusting when i got done but i guess it did get pretty soaked in Washington so maybe that helps. So if you're going to air dry you want to make sure that when you transport your sleeping bag from the tub or wherever you hand washed it out to air dry outside that you lift from the bottom and you'll notice like while you're hand washing it and kind of flipping it around and stuff that the down gets really heavy and that material is thin and you know delicate so you just want to watch that you're not just 
yanking it up and having all this weight of the soak down end up tearing a hole in the side of the shell of your sleeping bag. So when you transport it, you wanna make sure you scoop up under the bottom of everything and kind of carry it out all together. And then just lay it flat and as it's drying, you wanna make sure that you're separating the clumps of down. Um, you know, just check on it every so often and kind of shake it a little bit and separate that down until it's completely dry and lofty like back to normal and you really want to make sure that it's dry before you store it that way you don't end up with moldy down which would not be good and z packs actually says it's okay to lay the sleeping bag in the sun other companies i looked at sierra designs who my other sleeping bag is through and um, even mount hardware and they all say not to put directly in the sun because the sun can damage the nylon um, i've never laid a completely soaked sleeping bag in the sun before so you know i've not had it in the sun for hours and hours um, but i have laid a damp or like just something that got like a little wet from moisture in my tent or something like that outside in the sun um, for no more than an hour for sure and it's been fine but i'm not telling you to do that because if your sleeping bag gets destroyed i'm not gonna have it be my fault but i just know on trail when i've had a damp sleeping bag that i needed to dry out most of the time you know i lay it across a bush or you know on a rock or something like that um, usually directly in the sun but again for not very long some will say it's okay to dry in a dryer but z pack says to avoid dryers because you know they can heat up too much um, i actually did use a dryer uh, it was last resort because it was going to be raining for several days in washington and my sleeping bag got soaked uh, and i had to go back to town and dry it so um, i hung it up for a little while you know got some of the initial water out of it i put it in a dryer for just a few minutes on on low setting just to kind of help you know finish drying it completely and make sure that it got really fluffy and lofty actually they say a lot of home dryers will melt holes <laughs> in the sleeping bag um, just to be safe you can take it to like a laundromat use their front loading washer use their big old dryer um, you can get some tennis balls or you know some balls that are made um, for putting in the washer machine uh, and it'll kind of help break up those clumps of down but I would highly recommend checking it every so often making sure that sleeping bags not getting too hot and you know kind of separate some of those clumps of down by hand now if you're gonna go to a laundromat or use a dryer uh, somewhere else just make sure you fill it real good same thing with the washer and make sure that there isn't like no bent pieces of metal uh, where those little holes are because the last thing you need is like the side of your sleeping bag being cut completely open and just you open the dryer to see you know a million feathers to store your clean sleeping bag you want to either hang it up in a closet i don't really love to do this because then you've got like a crease um, where either the sleeping bag is like folded over a hanger or if you're hanging it from one end then you've got you know kind of all the down um, weighing down on itself so what i like to do is to just put it in like a big stuff sack you can get like those big cotton laundry bags and so to me you know it's just better stored in something like that so not all of the down is resting on all of itself you just basically don't want to compress it to store it long term because just you know having that down just compressed all the time can eventually damage it and you know basically crease the feather in a certain position when it's stored like that for a long time so i know some of y'all are probably wondering well how many times should i be washing my down during a through hack well i don't have a magical number for you all i can tell you is that i never did i never washed my down sleeping bag or down coat um, on the AT, I started with a real thin, like silkish feeling um, sleeping bag liner. And it was basically just so I could climb in stinking if I wanted to. And then I could always wash that liner while I was in town with my laundry. And it helped keep my sleeping bag, you know, the inside of it kind of clean. Now on the PCT, I was trying to cull as much weight as possible. So I didn't worry about that. Um, I just made a point to really clean my legs and arms off before I got in my sleeping bag, whether it was with baby wipes or taking water and just washing my legs off. And you know, if for some reason I was low on water or didn't have any baby wipes, then I made sure that I wore only my pajamas inside my sleeping bag. And most of the time that was leggings that covered my legs, um, socks that covered my stinking feet, and then, you know, long sleeve top. So uh, most of the time my down wasn't directly touching my skin and if it was then I tried to make sure to clean off the best I could. Now you certainly can wash your down if you opt to but you know depending on again what the manufacturer says for your certain products it could be a pain in the butt if their 
they're telling you to hand wash it and lay it out to dry and all that you know just it could be a pain to do that while you're in town and then also it may be difficult to find down cleaner in the towns that you're going to be resupplying at some of the outfitters may have it but you'll likely buy something bigger than you need and then you've got extra so do you just throw it away or send it home you could put it in a hiker box so that's an option um but if you do think that the loftiness of your sleeping bag is being affected and you know would be better off to be cleaned because it's just that gross then certainly you can go for it and you know you don't have to have uh, the down cleaner to make it cleaner right so even if you just use water it'll probably help all right so now that i think we have talked enough about cleaning the down uh, i want to talk about some repairs because especially if you have a down coat and you ever sit next to a campfire you're probably going to wind up with a hole in your coat even though you try to be like ninja speed blocking the little you know embers and and ash that's floating near you it's probably going to happen i have several little holes on my sleeping bag probably from having it up on Mount Whitney watching the sunrise on the rocks. Uh, and then I also have some holes in my down coat from exactly what I was talking about from fires. So people have used Gorilla Tape and duct tape and yes, they will close a hole, but they're gonna leave sticky residue and you know they might not last as long as like a gear tape or tenacious tape. I've read, I haven't personally done it yet, but I've read that tenacious tape will last through several washings um, and it's kind of like a long-term temporary fix um, and it's something that you know once it peels off you could always replace and, and just kind of keep going like that but it's just important to close those holes as soon as you can that way you don't lose too much down out of it and you're really going to want to especially when you see it dangling and stuff you're really going to want to pick those down feathers out but don't do that <laughs> uh, just try to find some way to poke them back in or you know whether you like kind of pull from the inside um, to try to pull those feathers back in. But either way, just try to maintain your feathers until you can get some gear tape. Uh, a lot of outfitters do have that, or you could have it sent to you while you're on trail, or you could carry you know, a tiny little bit with you if you wanted to in your uh, repair kit. But um, anyway, basically what you're gonna do, you wanna just trim up the area where the hole is, make sure that no loose fabric is kind of hanging there or your down feathers are sticking out. Um, you want to clean the spot, they say, with rubbing alcohol. Um, so just make sure that that spot, you know, is clean so the tape will stick well. Then you're going to take your tape and, you know, you want to make sure you have a big enough piece. Uh, it says on the box to do an inch around the hole, um, so an inch of extra space, but I've read online people use a, an eighth of an inch or whatever. I mean, the more that you have, the better it might stay. Just make sure you have some extra, you know, hanging over the hole. Trim it up. Uh, now, one important tip is to make sure that you round the hole. So it's gonna seem easier to just leave it in like a square rectangular form. But if you think about it, uh, when it's rounded, you're not gonna have those corners that are so easy to peel up. So it'll probably last longer. Then you're gonna peel the backside off and just stick the little patch on the hole, start from the center and just mash out, trying to get rid of all those little air bubbles. Now it might take a little while for it to cure, you know, 24 or 48 hours. Um, depending on the gear tape you use, it should say on the box. But so I wouldn't recommend washing it right after you repair the holes. And actually I'm not going to wash my down jacket because I just repaired the holes. So um, I'm gonna wait a couple of days and then uh, hand wash my coat. Now, if you're like Dixie, I'm not a DIY kind of person. I don't wanna deal with this washing. I don't wanna deal with repairing these little holes or tears or anything like that. Companies that specialize in outdoor gear repair do exist uh, potentially whoever manufactured it might do repairs on it but if you don't feel like fooling with it and you don't find somebody local to you uh, you can check out rainypass.com they have cleaning services and repair services you know and you can kind of get on there and inquire as to what they do and the prices well that is all I have for y'all today on this topic if any of y'all have any tips that have helped with cleaning your down or you know trying to keep it a little bit nicer while you're on trail so you don't have to worry about washing it during the through hike please feel free to share that in the comments below or if you know anybody that specializes in cleaning this stuff um, this is something that I needed to do because you know I plan on taking the same sleeping bag on the CDT and it was rather stinky so uh, it was time to figure it out and I'm happy to share that with y'all today but again I would love to hear your input so thank y'all so much for watching and we will see y'all next time